Welcome back, ZeroK fans. This is Shadow Fury 63 with another exhibition match. This... There we go. This time we're going to be on Green Comet with Lori versus Yogsatoth. This map is not a map I've seen very often. This is, I mean, it's pretty clearly Comet Catcher just modified again. So it's once again like Red Comet or I guess Blue Comet. I don't know. This is this map's a bit bigger. I mean, as you can clearly see, it is a bigger map than Red Comet. Very different shape too. Both players had the signs at their start points, but I'm not sure how this is going to play out in one v one. Because yeah, this map is really big. But I guess we're going to find out. So this is Lodi versus Yogsdoth, and let's begin. So what the? That's weird. Anyway, so. Lori is going to be starting out with Light Vehicle Factory, while Yogstoth with also Light Vehicle, Light Vehicle Mirror, and Yogstoth being considerably less aggressive, only going for one dart before going for the Mason, while Lori, on the other hand, went for two darts and a, actually three darts. Very keen on making sure they know exactly what their opponent's doing before it comes up, because that's generally an important thing to know. What is your opponent doing? And. Yogstoth is considerably less concerned about that at the moment. Looks like they're trying to double check. Not sure where Lori started. Makes sense. And Lori also not sure where Yogstoth started. Thus the additional darts. So Lori will definitely know what Yogstoth is up to. But at this point, neither player is doing anything out of the ordinary. Both players are basically going for the standard Mason Scorcher. Because given the size of the map, you would go that order. Yogstoth actually... Actually, it looks like Yogstoth does have an extra... Yeah, two Masons compared to one from Lori. And Lori is otherwise going to be just setting up a little bit slower, I guess. It, this is kind of tricky, though. It's On the one hand, it's nice to have the extra workers, although admittedly in this particular case, this one's dead. Unless, is there something to save it? Is the Scorch going to save it? The Scorch is probably going to save it. Taking a lot of damage. Darts deal a lot of damage. They die quickly, but they deal a lot of damage. But anyway, I was about to say... The thing is, when you're running low on resources, it's a little bit risky to try to do this sort of thing where you're building up metal extractors everywhere, because you end up delaying how quickly you get that metal. Whereas if you're building up one at a time, you're building each metal extractor faster, and then that helps you with the next metal extractor. I mean, once you get to the point where you have more metal than you really need, which is never, but if you don't have a lot of assists going on, you're focusing more on just powering your economy. Once you get to like plus 20 or so, then yeah, a couple workers in your commander going around the map building metal is going to be very efficient. But, actually, well, if the factory is running full blast, then no, it's not. But if you're doing it, if you're doing it right now, like at plus 13 or so, it's a lot slower. See, Lodri is basically just going for one at a time. And that's working out very nicely. Their commander helping build up energy. But, actually, what are the priorities right now? They aren't sending any priorities. Their factory is at low priority as usual. This is how Lodri does things because it's the easiest way to make sure your factory units do not get in the way, especially when you're trying to build up your economy quickly. And on a map like this, that is what you're trying to do. That is the only thing you're trying to do. So setting up low priority in your factory is, in both players' cases, the, your, their idea of choice, and that is the right idea. It's a very good idea to do that. The alternative, of course, is to either eat having your economy get cut into by your units, which basically requires that you be much more aggressive to make up for the fact that your economy is behind your opponents. Or you shut the factory off from time to time. Like, you don't use infinite build, you just build a couple units, then stop, build economy, go back to the factory, build more units. But, when you have low priority, that's basically doing it as quickly as possible. That basically gives you as many units as you possibly can without having to worry about excess, but at the same time not having to worry about eating resources that could be used for building your economy faster. But at this point, both Laura and Yogstad have enough in the, their metal income to be able to basically just push. They can push as many constructions as they want. They push their economy as hard as they want at this point. Like two masons and a commander. That will definitely work. And speaking of pushing their economy, we see that Lori is going to be going for... Wait, no, sorry, that's Yogstad's forces. Why did I select those? Lori is going for, going for an attack towards this side. Yogstad's well prepared for that, so that shouldn't be a problem. And other than that, Lori is... Basically, everyone's just sort of setting up. I, at this point, oh wow, actually, Yogstoth got out of position, that's a big deal. Lodi at this point is going to have complete field day. There's nothing that's going to get in their way right now. This Lotus is about the only thing that's causing any problems, as is the leveler, but unfortunately they did lose a couple scorches. Oh, they lost more scorches than they needed to. 
if they'd just gone past, they would have been fine. There aren't really a whole lot of defenses around here, just at the periphery. Only one Scorcher able to get away with those, so Lottery gets a little bit a little bit of a disadvantage. They do kill the Metal Extractor, though, and they killed the Mason. And the Lotus. Like, they did a lot of damage here. So that wasn't a bad thing. But at this point, Yogstoff, they actually surprisingly aren't building that quickly. They're building a fair amount of defenses, so Lottery has this chance to naked expand, and they are taking advantage of it, setting up basically where they can, setting up the minimum of defenses. Like a Stardust here, a Lotus up in the northwest, sorry, northeast. Whereas Yogstoth, we see, like, the entire north side is just packed with defenders. And just defenders, but packed with defenders. I mean, you kind of have to because of the three missile thing, but they are still, they're spending a lot of money on defenses. Whereas Lottery is spending most of their money on making their economy. They're spending most of their money on getting more money. And these Scorchers are not harassing. These, however, in the north are definitely harassing and should be able, yeah, they're going to break through this entire... This north side is in jeopardy. Yogstoth could take a huge amount of damage from this. I think they're going to take... They, I think they are going to take a huge amount of damage. This leveler being their only saving grace right now. And Lori, Are they going to go for the main base? They're going to go for the periphery. They are going for the main base? Yep, they're going straight for the main base. Well, counterattack coming in here from Lori, but not going to do any good. That leveler of no use. Scorches over to the northeast. Take that out. But the main base is the real concern. And the levelers forcing the Scorchers away, but the Scorchers have plenty of room to deal damage on the way out. This Metal Extractor is dead. These Metal Extractors are totally dead. All the Scorchers are going down to the south. This Scorcher could go out here and take out even more Metal Extractors, though admittedly that Defender will be a problem. All the Metal Extractors are under threat. This Defender being about the only defense around here, and at this point, yeah, this is huge. Lodi's managed to deal a great deal of damage. Now they're at like 10 metal above the Oxidoth. Their army's a bit weaker, and Yogstoth does have the type counter. So that is going to be a bit of a problem. But Yogstoth is getting heavily damaged. I mean, that was just... They lost at least four... I think that lost about six metal... Yeah, six metal per second easily. Rebuilding quickly, as one should. But still, they lost a lot. And now for the counterattack, and Yogstoth not able to do much of anything. Lowry just setting up a line of lotuses. And no metal extractors. Okay, this is not the best place to attack. There was nothing there to kill. There was no Metal Extractor. There was a Mason, yeah, but there was nothing else besides that. And I mean, they got the Mason and left. But still, that was a lot of Lotuses for one Mason. Lodi really wanted to keep that alive. Well, Yogstad, on the other hand, did lose a few Scorchers there. Probably not the best idea. And now Lodi coming back with that one Scorcher, that one Hero Scorcher, which is going to die to this... This Solar Collector explosion is going to kill that Scorcher, and that's going to be the end of... No, not quite. Ten health left. Sheesh, I thought it was going to die. And Hero is wrong. But yeah, closing the energy is actually a big deal. Yogstoth is really low in energy. They got a lot of reclaim from the Scorcher kills. And now the Scorcher dies. Death Explosion of the Mason kills the Scorcher. Pretty much every unit has and building has a Death Explosion. If your units are at low health, do not attack from right adjacent to them. To your opponents, I mean. Even if it's something stationary, it's going to blow up and kill you. Every single unit has a mini burst when it dies. So right now, Lodri is... Trying to secure their advantage. Yogstoth is excessing quite a lot. They haven't for a little while. And they are just, at this point, panicking, I'm sure. I mean, they have, they've been building levelers this entire time. They've been building as quickly as they can. They need more energy. That's the biggest thing they need. They have a lot of room for reclaim. I mean, they have... How much reclaim do they have? They've got... Right by their commander, they got 600. And in their main base, they have another 800... No, more than that. Another 900 or so. In their main base area. In territory that's basically theirs. They have a lot of reclaim. But they can't use it, because they don't have the power for it. And they are building power for it, but that's... That's taken a little while. Like, Solar Collector after Solar Collector is being set up, and that's... Every single one is desperately needed. At this point, the factory could be pushed forward at 40, although the commander is using it... Okay, so the commander's using a bit of that metal, too. So that, sh that excess should go away fairly soon. But yeah, Yogstoth is in a lot of trouble due to the lack of energy there. Lottery, on the other hand, is perfectly fine. They have plenty of energy, they have plenty of metal. They don't have a huge amount of reclaim, but going for the gunship switch got... It. Well, okay, having gone for the gunship switch and a dozen rapiers, they should be able to take this out pretty quick. Like these Scorchers here. But they are going for the commander instead, which is not actually that risky of a move. There isn't much in the way to defend. Yogstoth did not read air. They did not set up ra ravens... In, sorry, not ravens. They didn't set up razors in advance, and they're going to lose their commander. Like, right now. Those Scorchers can't do much about it. 
They can shoot in the air and hope for the best, but that's about it. And that commander goes down, and that is Yogstoth even more in trouble when it comes to their economy. Granted, at this stage in the game, the commander death isn't a big deal, but you don't want your commander to die. As a general rule, commanders dying is bad. Now, with that, Lodri basically is able to take the midpoint. I mean, like I said, they've been ahead in economy. They're up to plus... They're 15 over. Between 15 and 20 over Yogstoth. Yogstoth does have the reclaim. They don't have a huge amount of power, though. Like, they need to build energy in their main base. This mason needs to start building metal extractors in order to get Yogstoth anywhere. At least, if they're going to use the reclaim. Because they need to use the reclaim, too. That's the thing. They need to build power plants. They need to use the reclaim. This reclaim is precious. Like, it is the one thing that's going to keep them from losing this game. If anything is going to keep them from losing this game, it is all this reclaim in their base. It was the reclaim around their commander, too, and actually their commander's own corpse. That is going to be valuable. That commander, beam laser, not enough, unfortunately, to keep it alive. But yeah, that, that is extremely valuable. Nice counterattack, though. Yogstoth, they don't have a lot of defenses to deal with. They have this one Lotus, and that's it. So that is going to be a nice attack. Assuming that they do kill that Lotus. They have to get rid of the Lotus quickly, and that's going to be tough due to the slow because of the Rapiers. Yeah, and Yogtoth is not paying attention to these Scorchers. These are their these are the most important things. I can see why their main base is under attack, but they need to they need to switch back and forth. These Scorchers are hugely important. There is nothing they can... They basically needed those to deal a lot of damage in a counterattack. And unfortunately, they did not. I mean, Lodri is 20 metal over. Actually, 25 now. It's just... The advantage is growing. This is snowballing. Yogstoth's only hope is reclaim and really good raids. And at this point, they haven't done much of either. Like, I don't see any reclaim right now. I see a lot of static defense. I see a lot of panicking. I see no raider razors for some bizarre reason. Razors would basically stop this in its tracks. Like, Glory wouldn't be able to harass anywhere if some razors were up. Defenders aren't a bad idea, but they aren't razors. They can work against two or three rapiers, but there aren't two or three. There are 19. Just for reference, there are 19 of these things. A razor would have no problems. And gunship switch from Yogg's too little too late, I think. I mean, especially given that nothing's being built from the... Why is there no crashers being built? Or heck, just now slashers, too. That's... That is surprising, given just how strong the Yogg's has gone for air... I mean, they've already gotten tridents, too. Like, they have two tridents along with the 21... 21 now, Ray Pierce, I should point out. And there are crashers. My mistake. There are three. That's good. Those are necessary. But those rapiers are still a pain in the butt. I mean, trying to get rid of them, on top of the fact that Yogstoth has just about half the economy of Lodri. Like I said, with Reclaim, there's, they've got a good minute or two if they go for Reclaim. They have roughly the same economy. And it's good for them to be cost-effective. That That is definitely a good idea. It's just trying to really make that work overall is not easy. Especially with how many... 23 now. I mean, they're, just being, they're being pumped out like two or three a minute. And heavy tanks on top of that. Lodri's favorite factory. Here we go. This is where Lodri likes to play. I mean, they mentioned they didn't really like hovercrafts that much, but they like their heavy tanks. But yeah, so it works out that in this map, being the size of the map, makes it kind of tricky to raid. No surprises there. And also makes a gunship switch quite powerful. Though, honestly, Yogg'Soth actually had a lot of room to raid. The thing is with a map like this is that on the one hand, raiding is kind of tricky because you can't go in, you die if you go in too far, if you're not careful. But also, your opponent is not going to defend everything. Lowry in particular, as we can see, Lowry's playing it very light, almost naked. But yeah, your opponent can't defend everything. They're going to defend either the front lines or they're going to pepper their area with defenses. So, you can get through. It's just knowing where you can get through. That's the tricky part. Trying to scout that out, poke around, try to figure out where it is that they're actually weak. But at this point, Lodri going for Ravager Switch, probably into Reaper Switch as well. Yep, there is the Reapers. Ravager Reaper from that Gunship Switch. I mean, that there are so many Rapiers. 20 Rapiers is more than enough at this stage in the game. And with the Rapiers coming in, I mean, these Ravagers will take out the Gunship Plants, and then they should be able to just pass in through here, like, through here, and then up. And that will probably close out the game. Did any? I don't think any Rapiers even came out for Yogg's Death. Nope, they're... Nope, they got none. They have no Rapiers in the map. So at this point, Yogstoth is basically kind of hosed. Well, Lori's going light in defenses compared to Yogg'Sadoth. Okay, now Lori's a bit heavier in defenses, but yeah. Okay. I should point out, when I say light in defenses, I mean in terms of position. Yes, I realize that Lori has three times the defensive value of Yogg'Sadoth, 
but also has more territory and is still kind of spread out. It's not as dense. But anyway, that was the game, and that was interesting, to say the least. Yeah, there were a lot of opportunities the Yogstoth had to raid out. Didn't manage to take advantage of them, unfortunately, and the times they did, they just lost track of the units. They got counterattacked in the meantime, and it didn't work. Oh well. That was that game, so I'll have another one for you guys on a much smaller, more zero-case-sized map, which will in fact be Fields of Isis, which completely contradicts my previous statement. Well, it'll be Sactoth versus Google Frog, so I'm assuming it'll be some good. It seems like Sactoth and Google Frog played a couple games about five hours ago. So we'll see how they played. I'm not sure if it was meant to be a first to two or if it was just play games and then after two games they both kind of got tired or Google Frog got tired. But yeah, we're going to watch that, so that will be up in just a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs> 